So good to see you all in the house of our Lord today. I understand that there's some birthday celebrations here today. Uh, Lori, is there any chance we could play a birthday for Philip and Kimberly? Anybody else a birthday today? Anybody else want to admit their birthday today? Okay, let's sing happy birthday. Can we do that to surprise you? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to have the lighting of our candles. Uh, Brother Wesley's back there. I want you to know that we went down the river. Many of you were with us, and Wesley baptized everybody. We got them all saved last week. It was wonderful, Wes. Going to light our candles as our praise team will lead us uh, in worship today. So let's all stand together, if you will. One, two, three, four.
We hope you're awake by now. The love of the Lord awakens you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that are gathered here today. May our worship be pleasing in your sight. Draw us close to your precious side. Direct our every single path, and we will always give you the praise and glory. And may all of God's children say... Amen. You may be seated. Going to ask any of the children that are here to come up front. We got any little ones today? All righty. Come on up. You can sit right up here again if you will. I got a bag full of something here. We need to put our hands up in the air. Come on up, girls. If y'all want to come with us, come on up. I didn't mean y'all to do this. <laughs> Come on up here. Just anywhere right up here. Y'all squeeze together. Can you squeeze in? All right, now all together, hands up together and say, Long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Withlacoochee River. Reverend Bullywing, Bullfrog, what's the Bullfrog say? You got it down pat. Well, they were having a church service, and Bully Wink Bullfrog was part of the music of the service this particular Sunday, and it was just absolutely amazing in the Critter Church, and they were speaking and singing about Jesus giving his life for us. Well, little Joey Ant was there in the church service, and Joey couldn't see because he's just a tiny little ant, so we asked Junior Alligator to help him out. Junior Alligator laid down his big tail. Joey crawled up on top of it. Junior held it up real high so that he could see the service. And then the service began. Wise old hickory owl, bullywink bullfrog, and the froggy quartet. Well, the quartet began by raising a question in song, who is so wonderful? And then wise old hickory owl would say, who? Because he's an owl, okay? So you're going to be the owl for me, all right? Some of you crazy folks can be owls as well, all right? Who is so wonderful? <laughs> Who is amazing? That sounds scary. I don't know. <laughs> Who gave his life for me? And then T Tony Turnell stood up, stuck his head up, and he said, Jesus. Can you say that with me? Jesus. Now, let me ask a question. I'm going to interrupt the worship service there. When they sang, who gave his life for us, what in the world does that mean? You hear that in church. Do you have any idea? Did I see your hand going up, or was that moving that beautiful hair back? I think it was. He gave his life for us. If Jesus gave his life for us, what would that mean? Any ideas? Well, I'm wondering if maybe it's the idea that when he died on the cross, cross that that was a way that he gave his life for us. You know, kind of like taking our place if we did something bad. Now, just imagine, if I can for a moment, Logan, if you got in trouble. I know you never do, right? You never do. And let's say that your parents are going to have to punish you for getting in trouble, okay? His eyes are getting this big here. So if that happened and they're about to punish you, but then your sister Jordan came in and said, I will take his punishment for him. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I'm not going to ask if you do that or not, but I think that's kind of what Jesus did for us. He gave his life on the cross, died for us so that we get to go to heaven. He took all of our bad stuff away. Isn't that amazing, Ethan? I think it is. Well, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we know that you are wonderful, you're amazing, and you gave your life for us. Bless our young folks as they go to Sunday school and our worship service in Jesus' name. And may all of God's critters say... Amen. Well, I'm going to give the candy here to you, Mr. Ethan. Let's stand up, turn around, wave at one another, and we're going to ask Miss Ingrid to come up for our announcements today. Ah, <laughs> you may be seated. If you'll take the bulletin, hopefully you picked it up out front there. Miss Ingrid's going to cover our announcements. And then after our announcements, we have a couple families joining our church. And we'll share with them before we do our scripture lesson and our prayer concerns. Ingrid? Good morning. Happy Sunday um, to all those 
here and watching online. Um, are there any visitors? Okay. Um, oh, I see one. <laughs> Would you like to stand and tell us who you are and where you're from? Well, welcome to Florida and welcome to our church. <clears throat> um, and there are pew pads at the end of the uh, pews. Sorry, my brain's still not quite there yet. I don't always get the words right. Um, if you would write your, if you would sign it and then write your cell or your email if you'd like to be part of Pastor's Weekly Devotional. Um, <clears throat> and I don't want to miss this, so Tyler finally completed his project if you have not seen it. <clears throat> it's it's 99.8 percent done. <laughs> So he, um, he has a flag that, uh, you know, everything is late coming that is due along with a permanent um, plaque. Thank you, honey. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, and we'd like to thank my father-in-law who worked so, so we as a family, Tori, me, everybody, throws ideas out to my father-in-law and he just makes it happen. So um, he's the one that made the, <clears throat> the monument part of it um, for the plaque and stuff. So um, he's a wonderful dad, grandpa, great grandpa, and just we can't say any, enough good things about him. <laughs> So, <clears throat> um, the Second Life Thrift Shop will be open this week on Wednesday, but no donations um, are being taken at this time. The official board meeting on Tuesday, the September 21st, is at 6.30 p.m., and where it will be approving next year's budget and officers. Thursday, September 23rd at 10.30 is the UMM board meeting, and at noon is the men's meeting in Friendship Hall. Thursday after the midweek, worship at 4 p.m. is a potluck open to everyone in the hall. <clears throat> um, we'll have forks to set up if you bring your pots and they will serve it at the time. And um, they will be doing it the same as we do it in Scouts. Everybody won't be serving themselves just to keep it a little safer. And the ones that are serving will be wearing masks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, We'll show a movie, The Chosen, in the hall at 4.30 p.m. Come for whatever portion you prefer. Saturday, September 25th, will be the Scout Spaghetti Dinner, which you can pick up between 1 and 5 p.m. And our family is going to be super busy that day because it's also Wesley's um, Marion County Invitational Swim Meet So at 7 o'clock in the morning. So if Kevin and I are running a little ragged, that's why. <clears throat> um, but come and have a great spaghetti dinner and they are raising money for their a new Pinewood Derby because their Pinewood Derby um, track is falling apart. Um, <clears throat> September 26th at 4 p.m. will be the monthly Vesper meeting. Our speaker will be Pastor Noberto and will be speaking in, this exper in his experience and concerns on Cuba. On October 2nd at 6.30, there will be a worship night live concert an evening of worship music by the worship team, the youth praise team. So if you like to watch Jordan up here singing, I'm sure she's part of that. A wide variety of popular worship music and pastor will lead us in a grand finale medley sing-along. Door prizes, refreshments, and child care um, are all free and bring your friends. So just a little tidbit. Tor Jordan and I were talking yesterday because she's... She she gets emotional about some stuff. And I told her, don't let other people steal your joy. So I want to leave everybody with that for this week. Just because others might get you upset, don't let it steal your joy, whether it's your joy in Jesus or just your general joy in life. So. Thank you, Ingrid. 
I would like it this time, and they are transferring from another Methodist church, so we could just move their names in and membership, but we at this tradition here like to always go through some basic vows and an opportunity for families to express their Christian faith in front of everyone by saying, yes, they love Jesus. So I'm going to ask if Frank and Cindy Pfeiffer, and uh, also for Justin and Jennifer, their family there, if they want to come forward, they're joining our church officially today, so we're excited about that. <laughs> Y'all will just come and stand for just a moment, uh, just right here. Um, as you see on the screen, it says, New Member Renunciation of Sin and Profession on Faith. I'm just going to work through the liturgy. I want to mention, you saw Justin up here singing. He's been a wonderful addition. If you all saw them out here and his dear bride uh, canoeing last week, that was just amazing. Uh, they're such a great addition to the church. Frank and Cindy as well. Frank is also a spiritual director of the Emmaus gatherings in our communities, in our district, and uh, so we're very excited about that. And to have both of these families with us is just just wonderful. Amen. Some of you are thinking of joining the church. There'll be upcoming classes again uh, soon if you would be interested. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, and if you will answer with I do, I ask you, do you reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sins? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you before this company here today confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. Will you be loyal to the church and uphold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? I do. Congregation, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this dear couple. We ask your blessings on Frank and Cindy and Justin and Jennifer. Lord, it is a tremendous privilege that they are joining our fellowship. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide them and that we might benefit their spiritual growth and that the fruit of their labors would benefit us as well. Your blessings to be upon them now. In the name of Christ, we pray. And may all of God's children say... Let's welcome our brand new members. You may be seated. Thank you, Frank and Cindy and Justin and Jennifer. Thank you so much. At this time, let's have our uh, scripture. Wesley, if you'll come. And let's have the congregation stand in honor of the scripture. Wes? Good morning. Today's scripture is Mark 30 to 32. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were. Because he was teaching his disciples, he said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. This is the word, God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated and ask that you turn in your uh, bulletin to on the back side. It's got our prayer concerns. I was so excited to see the um, Eagle Scout project that uh, Ingrid was sharing about her son, um, Tyler, was putting together and the family was working to help him and assist him. And it's just been beautiful seeing their three sons that have went through their Eagle Scout program. If you haven't seen it yet, it's right to the right here, and it's just absolutely beautiful, and it's in honor of our veterans, and especially Bill Kitchens, who went on to heaven, um, and he was just such a great asset to the scouting program and to the veterans as well. We also have another praise report. Um, three years ago, the uh, church here uh, bought a new parsonage. It's in the Woodland community of Rainbow Springs, we had been in the old parsonage, and uh, it had really went by the wayside. And so we had a rental for a year, and the church looked for a place and found this. And we borrowed from ourselves instead of going to one of our local banks from our reserves. And I just want you to know this last week, we uh, paid that off 100%. <laughs> what a praise report. 
It is a beautiful parsonage, and our family just really appreciates it. And families from now on, obviously, will appreciate that so, so very much. For our prayer concerns, Bob Gunby is back in the hospital. He came home and then had to go back as well. Walter Davis is home on hospice, if you can keep him in your prayers. Tiny Weimert uh, had a bad fall at Walmart, not able to be here with us today. She usually comes to this service. And uh, Tyler and I met with uh, Pat Martin this last week, talking about some of his background. And Pat's mother-in-law, many of you know Alice Campbell, has been in the hospital. She's back in the retirement home now, but she has been in the hospital. So if we can keep her in our prayers, would be beautiful. Jenny Flanagan, who used to come to the 8 o'clock service, her cancer, she calls it her markers are just up so high, she's not able to be with us. Uh, she watches the services, so if you can keep Ed and Jenny in your prayers. And then all of those, dear friends that are home struggling with COVID right now, um, Monty Snyder, uh, Harvey Kaufman, and I'm sure there's others as well, uh, their families taking care of them. Let's just continue to keep uh, them before the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask at this time, Bobby, if you'll make your way forward and Lori to... Uh, lead us in prayer. What I like to do, friends, I think I mentioned this a couple different weeks, is just hold the prayer concerns in my hands while Bobby prays for us. If you'll do that, Bob. Good morning. It's good to see all of you once again in a house where we can, we're not ashamed to say amen. We're not ashamed of a God that we serve. He's so good, and all the time, yes, he is. We're going to um, go to our Heavenly Father today in prayer. And before we do so, our altar is open for anyone that wants to come up and stand in the gap for someone that can't stand for themselves. Those names that Pastor Eddie lifted up, those that are struggling with their personal issues, with their sickness. We want to stand in the gap for those folks also. And we're going to go to our Heavenly Father because that's what He wants us to do. Cast our cares up at His feet. So we're going to go to our Heavenly Father. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. Father, for allowing us to get up this morning Father, you allowed us to get up, started us on our way. Oh, Father, you didn't have to do it. But, oh, but you did. You allowed your children to come to a church, come to a place where we can cast all of our cares. Father, we can lay our burden down. Father, you said, who shall ever will, Father, let them come. Father, we're here today because of your mercy Father, because of your grace, oh, in this place, Father, you haven't forgotten us. Father, you know all of us that you created, created us in your image from the dust. Father, look what you've done. You created us Sunday out of the week to allow us to come and be in your presence to allow all of your children to get together once again and say thank you for what you've done. Thank you for guidance today. Father, you allow us to come down the highways and byways to be here, redirected all harm and danger for us to come. Oh, and be in your midst. Father, we're asking that you have your way. Father, let thy way be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, you've given us this day to say thank you for who you are. Thank you for all that you've done. Father, we're going to thank you in advance for the blessing that you're going to store upon all of those that's on the, on the prayer chain list. Father, you know their needs. Father, their wants, their desires. Father, strengthen Bob. Father, he's in your care. What better hands to be in right now? Father, you've moved mountains. Father, you've calmed the Red Sea. 
Father, whatever he's going through, Father, we know you've got it taken care of. Father, he's a true believer that he serves a God that's unmerciful. He serves a God that's unforgiving, an everlasting God, a God who knows when enough is enough, a God who knows. And Father, those that are in hospitals, nursing homes, Father, those that are in rehab centers, county jails, Father, be in their midst today. Father, all those that are tuning in online, worshiping us from home, from afar, Father, go in their rooms. Father, let your presence be felt. Father, let them know that you're a God that forgive them for whatever reason. You're a God that accept us with your arms open wide. Father, we can run to you when we can't go nowhere else. Father, we come to you when our friends turn our backs on us. Oh, but Father, you never failed us. You brought us this far not to leave us. Father, remember our nation, our leaders. Father, those that are going through the recovery of hurricanes, floods, tornadoes. Father, it could have been done Ellen. Could have been done Ellen. But Father, you re redirected the path. Father, we see the goodness and your mercy in this place right now. We see the evidence of your goodness. Father, we're here saying thank you. And Father, look on our church. Father, our new members. Father, let them be a blessing to our church. Let this church be comforting in every way. Father, our guest today. Father, we thank you for our guest today. Father, they could have went anywhere, but you allowed them to come to a church that accept them for who they are and be a church family to them. Father, they can come and praise and worship. Father, our doors are always open. Father, look on this congregation as we continue to worship and praise your name. Father, look on our pastor and his family. What a praise report that he's given on our parsonage. Father, we thank you for the gifts that you laid upon all the hearts that gave. Father, we thank you. We thank you today. We thank you today. Oh, let's give him some praise. Put your hands together. Give him some praise. Father, you're worthy to be praised. Father, we're going to give you the honor and the glory. Oh, Father, as the praise team come, Father, the songs that we sing, let them be comforting in thy sight. Father, have your way. Father, let your presence rain down from the heaven. Let it flow like the Jordan River. Cleanse us from the crown of our head, Father, to the sole of our feet. And Father, we're going to give you the honor and praise. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's all rise, if you will. As Bobby said, the altar is open, and during the praise and worship time now, we have a team behind the altar, and if you want to be anointed or just prayed with, if you'll just lift your hand, they'll be more than glad to do that. It's always a joy to see the altar full and folks gathering around praying for each other. So whatever the needs are today, the altar is open just for you.
Father, we ask yes. that your presence Amen. be overwhelming today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Father, let it be felt all over the house. Yes, Jesus. And may all of God's people say, Amen. 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 on the same. Father, it's your grace that brought us this far. And Father, you haven't turned your back on us. Today, we're going to honor, give you the glory and the praise. And may all of God's people say, Amen. 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 
Let's thank the praise team for leading us in worship. Thank you, team. You may be seated. What a wonderful, wonderful worship experience today with the musicians and the vocalists. Just great. Thank you, Andy and Lori, so very much. Let me mention a couple things before we jump right into the sermon, and that is that uh, uh, the door prizes for the big event we have coming up, uh, some of those are in the office, and um, I like them, so I'm going to be winning those door prizes. I want you to know, you know, a lot of times when you have a big event, uh, and our worship team will be leading us, I hope that many of you will be able to be there with us uh, in the future when we have that night of worship. But um, many times door prizes are just simple little things, but I have seen these. I want you to know you're going to have to fight your pastor for these door prizes. These are great. These are great. Uh, So I hope you'll be with us. And I also want to mention this Thursday afternoon, it may have been confusing uh, when uh, the idea that we're having a potluck in a movie. We've been wanting to show a movie for a while, and uh, we are set up now. We can do that from in here into the hall. Uh, We do have a DVD player as well as online. And uh, the series has come out a couple years ago, The Chosen. And the girls and I have been watching that at the house and just have fallen in love with it. The early years of Jesus and his disciples. So we thought we would try just the first one. And uh, even if you've seen it, I would encourage you to come out. We have our midweek uh, afternoon service, uh, three to four on Thursdays. I know many of you are working, but those that are free. But right afterward, we're going to step over there and have a potluck. And uh, like I said, folks will be bringing that in early, and we have some ladies going to take care of that and then serve that. Um, And then even if you don't, you don't have to be a part of the potluck, just come for the movie. It's about an hour, uh, and we would love to have you in in next door. And I think that you would enjoy it thoroughly. We'd love to have you. And if you want to bring some chicken wings, that'll be all right as well, Uh, because that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to bring some wings, and we'll just have a great time together. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for a beautiful worship experience. Truly, we have been in your presence. And we just ask now that as we look at the words that uh, Brother Wesley read to us just a little while ago from the Holy Scriptures, that you would speak to us as only you can. In Christ's precious name, amen. Now, we titled the message this morning, Jesus Predicts his death. And that's kind of what I was emphasizing with the children just a few moments ago about, you know, when Jesus talks about that, what does that really mean? Now, I'm going to get into that for our sermon, but I want to begin um, with the concept that the mood changed drastically when Jesus began to talk about his uh, betrayal and persecution. And, you know, things are going well in the ministry. And, you know, as I mentioned, if you were here last week, feeding the 5,000, the miracles, the healings. But then Jesus constantly would lift up. But the Son of Man, referring to himself, is going to be betrayed, which means one of them is going to betray, be betrayed and and going to be persecuted. Now, these folks know that in the um, Jewish tradition, if someone is is taken to the death penalty, they stone them. That was of the biblical age. But the Romans, who they were controlled by, and that was the fear of the day, they knew they were experts how to make a person suffer on the old rugged cross. So they knew that that was a possibility too, because Jesus had already had many death threats, and he didn't have a safety team to protect him like we have here today in our church and other churches as well, you know. And so, and the things that he's saying are very, very scary. So Jesus would would bring these things up right in the midst of, of something that was just wonderful, and it would change the mood drastically. So saying that, I want to begin with a, a just a humorous thought. Um, about a mood change. Uh, some of you, I'm sure you remember the old joke about the uh, Methodist preacher and how that the fellow came up to him one day, he was outside the church, and he said, he said, uh, you're the preacher? He said, yes. And he said, um, I, it's going to be unusual. He said, but my puppy dog went to heaven. And he said, um, I don't go to church anywhere. And he said, so I don't, you know, I don't know what to do with this. And I saw your sign out there. And he said, but I really would like to have a funeral for my puppy dog. And so the Methodist preacher thought, ah, you know, this, that's not the norm. Um, and you're not a member here. You know, and I'm busy. 
And so he just thought about it a moment and he said, you know what? He said, the Baptist church is right down the road. And he said, they're very evangelical and they will love to share with you and, and just minister to you and take, I'm sure they'll take care of your puppy dog. And so the gentleman said, great. He said, where is that? So the Methodist preacher points him where the Baptist church is and he starting to leave. And then he turns around and he says, can I ask one more question? He said, I, again, I'm not familiar. He said, I don't know how much to pay the Baptist minister. He said, and I was thinking about $500. The Methodist preacher said, Woo! He said, I, you know, wait just a minute. He said, I didn't know it was a Methodist puppy dog that had went on to heaven. The mood changed drastically. Dear friends, I think I'm going to be changing your mood this morning for the seriousness of this thought. The A of our ABCs, the disciples were afraid. They were afraid to talk about death, to talk about persecution. We're, we're all afraid sometimes. That's one reason I love the Stephen ministry. I know that you hear us talk about this quite a bit, and many of you are involved. I have the opportunity this week, a, a new family. They live out on Highway 140. And they called a gentleman from up north and said that he, he said, I have friends and they're taking care of their parents. They're in their 90s. And he says, I, they just need, they need, they're Methodists. They, they need a, a somebody to go see them. So I called yesterday and set it up for this coming Thursday. I'm going to swing by and I'm going to take communion with me and see them and visit with them. And when, as I was talking to them on the phone, I said, let me tell you also about the Stephen ministry. Because this may be a family that could use ongoing care, ongoing care care and, and ministry and, and listening and being a, a part. And one of the great things about the Stephen ministry is that we're not afraid to listen and talk about death, about death. You know, so many times people that have lost a loved one, you know, we don't want to rock their boat anymore. And so we, we have a tendency not even to mention the person's name that has died. And yet many times they need that more than anything. They want to talk about them. You know, because they're in the Christian faith. We know they're on the other side. If they love Jesus, they're with the Lord. So we want to talk about that, you see. The disciples were afraid, the A of our ABCs, to, to bring these kind of things up. Because it wasn't just death, the possibility Jesus would die, but what and how he would die. The persecution, you know, how he was going to die. And that, you know, we need to, as the church... Talk about that. And as, as graphic as that is and, and uncomfortable as that is, we still need to talk about it. Jesus died on the old rugged cross for our sins. Our sins are so yucky and ugly and terrible. Your sins, my sins, that we, you and me, put Jesus on the cross. We're guilty. We're guilty. We don't think that sometimes. We think, well, it's for those others and people like Adolf Hitler or Saddam Hussein, but Jesus died for you and me. Amen. Those big nails went in his hands. And I imagine when they did that, he screamed. We killed him and he screamed. I'm sure he took that pain, the nails in his feet when he was whipped before he went to the cross, the spear in his side, all for you and me. We need to talk about the cross. We need to realize, dear friends, what he has done for us, the church. Because if we truly realize what he has done for us, the church, we will stand for what is right. Amen? And we need a motivation. And the motivation is Jesus gave his all. And not just some sweet, tender uh, Savior that died in, a, in an old age. He was cut off in his 30s. And he was brutally beaten. For you and me, because sin is ugly, and we have been in sin, and it's only because of Jesus that we are set free. Can you say amen? amen. There's a beautiful Bible verse. I've used it many times. 1 John 4, 18, perfect love casteth out all fear. Say that with me. Perfect love casteth out all fear. And it's not, it's not your perfect love for God. It's coming to the realization that you're a terrible sinner and that God has his perfect love for you. You know, when you feel that wash over you, and maybe somebody's listening today here or online, and you've never experienced that, you're missing out. 
You know, you might say, well, I, 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 I love God. I love Jesus. I believe that, but I, you know, and you, but you just feel like you're just kind of in the doldrum there. This is the most important thing ever. We must realize our sins and Jesus has forgiven us and we get to live with him eternally. And he had to do that because you can't live with a righteous, holy God unless your sins are gone. You can't enter into heaven with your sins. You can't get to heaven without Jesus. You cannot do that. And so Jesus not only had to give his life, he had to die a horrendous death. He had to suffer because sin is terrible, absolutely terrible. And when he dies on the cross, do you remember? When he cries out, what does he say? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I heard one pastor one time describe it. He said, when Jesus literally becomes all the sins of the world, past, present, and future, God the Heavenly Father, there was a separation. There had never been a separation before. But God, the holiness cannot condone sin, cannot be a part of sin. And now a part of him has become sin. So God turns. And that's why Jesus hollers out. Why have you forsaken me? Remember, he's all man at the same time. And what happens? Do you remember what it says? Literally, darkness comes. It's as if God turns and darkness and storms come in Jesus. And he doesn't just die in a few seconds. Hours and hours and hours upon the cross of Jesus Christ for your sins. Think of this now. For yours and mine. This isn't for somebody else's and for some faraway place that need Jesus. This is you and me. And we need to honor that and understand that and realize that. And then that motivates us to come what may, even if death is in front of me, even if persecution is in front of me, I'm willing to do it because my Jesus did it for me. Amen. Amen. The B of our ABCs, Jesus was betrayed. Now, we all know the story of Judas and the Judas kiss that became an interesting slogan. How that Judas, a friend of Jesus for three years, part of the inner circle, comes because of his desire for more money or other reasons and betrays Jesus. And remember when he kissed Jesus on the cheek, if you're not familiar with that story or why that happened, it's at night. They don't have the lights like we have today. They don't know who Jesus is and everybody's dressed the same. They can't tell. They don't want to cause a big disturbance and a, have a war going on there or a battle. So Judas goes directly to where Jesus is and kisses him. And what does he say? You betray me with a kiss. I thought how terrible, how horrific that is, but it's not the worst. I researched this again yesterday. Peter's betrayal. All four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, talk about Peter denying Jesus three times before the rooster crows. You're probably all familiar with that. But now only in the Gospel of Luke is this mentioned. It's not in Matthew, Mark, or John. And in Luke chapter 22, for those of you who like to write it down and double check, in Luke chapter 22, verse 61 You see, they're in the courtyard. Peter is denied him twice. Jesus is in the courtyard as well. And they have really been rough on him. And he's there. Peter is warming himself by the fire. Somebody is saying, you know, I think you're one of them. I think you're, and he is so upset and he's afraid, like you and I would be, that he even begins cursing. He just, he said, I don't know the man. And when he says that, the scripture says in verse 22 that Jesus turns. Verse 61, excuse me. And looks directly at him. And the rooster crows. Can you imagine what that would be like? Can you just think of that for a minute? The Bible says Peter's response, he ran. He ran out of there. He went crazy. He ran out of there. The one that he loved, the one that he adored, he betrayed him to his face. Right to his eyes. Can you imagine what Jesus' eyes must have looked like? The hurt and the love at the same time. I get chills thinking of that. I cannot even, I cannot even imagine. When you're thinking about betrayal, let's just blame it all on Eve. (laughs) Amen, amen, men. If she had just left that apple alone, she just left it alone. Sure enough, there was some chicken wings over here. You know, what in the world? My goodness gracious, we'll come back to her in just a minute. 
You've probably all felt betrayed one way or another. I'm sure you have in something in life, you know. Um, in the Methodists, you that are Methodists, you know, I know some of you may have various backgrounds. I know we have some guests. Um, we have something called the trust clause. You're probably all familiar with this. It's the reason that, that there's a turmoil because in the trust clause, all United Methodist churches and property bank accounts belong to all of United Methodism around the globe, everywhere. It belongs to United Methodism, not just to the local unit. So if you feel like you need to go different direction, that remains with the United Methodist Church, even if it, you just put your dollar in the offering plate, you see. That's called the trust clause. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, he brought that to us in the beginning of the Methodist church. I mean, you're talking about way back, a couple hundred years ago. And the purpose, you can, you can look at this. You could probably look it up online, find out why it was even there. They were so afraid of churches leaving the Bible. Now think of that. They were so afraid churches leaving the understanding of Methodism, following the Bible, that they said, you know, if they go crazy, they'll just take everything with them. And, it, and that belongs to those that will follow the Word of God. And now it's been turned up on his head. I feel betrayed. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. You do too. I know. I know. Betrayal is real. But friends... When we sin, does Jesus turn and look at us like he did at Peter? You know, the greatest gift is his love and forgiveness and kindness. But there are those that just keep on sinning. How, how do we betray the Lord? Maybe when we hurt somebody, you know, and we do it in the name of God. You know, and we just, just hurt them. Really? Really? You know, I mean, we can, we can uh, agree to disagree, but to hurt somebody, you know, to come against them. I see this in the, in, in the denomination, you know, just to really go after somebody. I thought, that doesn't sound like Christianity to me. You know, what, where'd that come from? The betrayal and how people can be so convinced that what they're doing is right. You know, I always am afraid of this when somebody says, thus saith the Lord. I thought, yeah, thus saith you of the Lord. I want to I want to make sure on that, you know, and you got to be careful, of course, be as wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. So what do we do with that? The world, that's the world we live in. Well, if you follow the scriptures, actually go to the next verse. If your Bibles are open or your app you're looking at our Bible app, the verse 33, it says Jesus began to reside in Capernaum. That was in Galilee, fulfilling a prophecy hundreds of years written before in the book of Isaiah that he would be in Galilee and that the people there living in darkness would see a great light. Do they see a great light in us, friends, in the church of Jesus Christ? Do they see that light of Christ has to shine through you now? Do they see a great light right here on this end, the western end of Marion County here in Dunellen? You know, we're on the highest area of, of, of uh, Marion County here on the West End. Our little church is. This is really cool. We're really a, a light. Is it shining brightly? Is it shining brightly? Jesus brought that light to Capernaum, and he began to teach them and began to minister to them and began to love on them. And he encouraged them to repent of their sins. Now, there was pride there was pride. The disciples, if you read on, they were kind of fussing. I know you've heard me say this before, but my daddy used to say that, I wonder if Jesus sometimes looked at the 12 disciples and then looked up to heaven and said, are you sure? <laughs> but they're real. They're people like you and me. That's one reason I love the Bible. They're very real. You know, they've got problems, but, but they're working it out. They're working it with God, you know. And it's just, it's just amazing what, what the Lord is doing there. But they were arguing. You know what they were arguing about? You know, who's going to be the greatest? Think of that. Who's going to be the greatest? And Jesus takes a little child. He said, you must have childlike faith. You must become like a child. You can't, 
You can't be arrogant. I, I think that's the difference. I think it's arrogance and humility. I was talking with someone else this last week, and we were talking about King David in the Bible and King Saul, and how that the Bible says that King David was a man after God's own heart, but yet we have in the Bible the terrible sins of King David, adultery, and then murder as well. And you don't have any of those kind of sins with King Saul, at least written in the scriptures. So why is David uh, loved, it appears, and it says he's a man after God's own heart. But every time David was caught in his sin, according to the scriptures, he fell down and repented and cried out to God. He seemed to understand who God really was. And, and he said, please help me, forgive me. And, and that humility just washed over him. You don't see that in King Saul. At least I don't see it in King Saul at all in those early stories in the Bible. So I'm wondering if that's not really the, the, the big area there that we need to focus on, humility and arrogance, you know? Pride, go with before a... You know that one well. He told them to repent. How do we repent? Think about, uh, and this is what the Lord told me to leave you with today, to challenge you. Everybody probably needs to repent to change something. I thought about uh, Thomas. He doubted. You know, he just, he just doubted. Uh, maybe some of you are just doubting God. You need to repent of that. You know, take a chance and believe. What do you got to lose? You know, except your pride. Take a chance. What about Adam and Eve? Let's go back there for a moment. You know, I was able to hear Brother Russ, Baptist minister right down the road here just a few days ago, give a a speech, and he told the story again about God creating a woman, and I, I loved it. Some of you were there, and uh, I never thought about it like this until he shared it. He said, you remember in the passage where it says that God, you know, brought all the animals, because he was created first, and brought all the animals, and he's naming all the animals, and he's trying to also find him a helpmeet, you know, and he said the giraffe came by, and he said, Adam just kind of looked up there and said, I don't think so, Lord. I don't think so. And then I'll use my translation. The gator came by, you know, even though you looked pretty good yesterday, guys, the gator came by. <laughs> I think he said, uh, think so. uh, no, 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 no. So he offered the first anesthesia, put him to sleep. And then when he wakes up, he looks and he says, Whoa, man. Now, I don't think that's probably a literal translation. That comes from first or second Russethy, I think, down at the Baptist church there. Where was Adam? Eve is being tempted by the devil. Did you know you guys, let me talk to you for just a minute. You guys, you are called to work with your princess. <laughs> you are called <laughs> to work with your princess she will never become a queen unless she has a knight unless she has a king she's got a job it's your job to love on her and to guide her and direct her and encourage her when all else comes against her, you're to be there for her. Where was Adam? I know where he was if it was Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Eve fighting these battles all along? What's going on here? And isn't that the condition of today? You know? The condition of today. The truth is we've all fallen short of the glory of God. I thought about Sapphira. In Acts chapter 5, she was following a false leader. And it just happens in that story. It happened to be her husband. But I don't want to focus on that since we just talked about Adam and Eve. But she was following a false leader. And I want you to think about that for a minute. Who are you following, friends, as a child of God? Who are you following? Is it the Lord? Is it the Word of God? Is it your denomination? Is it your political leaders? Is it just your conscience? Is it just a voice inside your head of grandma? Who are you following in the Lord? I felt the Holy Spirit say all of us need to repent of something. 
And only you know what that is. And if you don't know, then you should ask the Lord. And I'm sure he'll be glad to tell you what it is. Let us pray. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up at this time. Father, we do love you so very much. And we thank you for all that are gathered here today. I truly felt that you wanted me to leave the congregation with that concept about repentance. We all need to repent of something. Pray right now with me, friends. Lord, what is it I need to repent of? Not, not somebody you're dealing with, not your friend, not your spouse, not your children. What do you need to repent of? Lord, what do I, Pastor Eddie, what do I need to repent of? And the good news is the Lord has already paid the price for our sins. So he's right there on the right hand of the Father ready to reach down and take your hand and guide you and help you along the way. If there's anyone here that has not asked Jesus to come into their heart, now would be a perfect time online as well. Just say, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me, please, Lord. I'm not even sure if I'm all that sorry for everything or what I need to be sorry for, but I know I want something more. Forgive me of my sins. That's repentance, friends. If that's you, just pray that simple prayer. It doesn't have to be my exact words. Just, and I don't want to put the words in your mouth. We have a tendency to do that as well. You do that. You just open up to God. It'll be real if you do that. And let him speak to your heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name we pray. And may all of God's children say, Amen. Let's all rise together. And as our tradition, the altar is again open at the last song. Or you can make the place where you're standing a place of prayer and commitment.
once again, Father, for who you are. Father, you have been good to us, more good to us than we've been to ourselves. And Father, as we come to the close of this service, Father, help us to put on the whole armor of God. And Father, till we meet again, may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and wave. We'll see you next Sunday morning.